Hello everybody, happy Friday. It's time for Facebook Friday. It's two o'clock, I think. Suddenly I'm like, what time is it? <laughs> I think I'm a few minutes late. Yes, 2.01, okay. Hello, hope you've had a good week. Um, this week we're using the musical Jamboree stamp set. You might have missed this one in the catalog, the annual catalog. It's kind of tucked in towards the back, but it's super, super cute. And um, I actually was thinking about s'mores when I was playing around with the set. So we actually have two different s'more treats today to do and a card. Plus I have two bonus cards for my card making people. Um, I have some things to tell you before we get to that, okay? Uh, first off, let me just show you the new Halloween kit. I put it together today. Can you guys see how cute it is? It's pretty big. And I will, I will admit I was rushing to get it done because I wanted to have it for you guys today. Um, and so it's not perfect, which is annoying me a little bit, but it'll be fine. Uh, you do need a hot glue gun with this kit. I will tell you that. Um, it's actually not difficult. It's just the directions um, don't have words. You know, like if you've ever bought something from Ikea and you have to figure out the directions. <laughs> That was what was getting me, but I'm sure there's going to be a video. There probably already is, but I was just too much in a, in a rush to um, to look. But it turned out pretty cute. You can, um, you probably can't tell, but these are like vellum, so you can put like a little uh, battery-operated candle in there, and it's really, really fun. So um, I think kids could do it, maybe older kids, maybe not little kids, just because of the hot glue gun. Um, but it's a really, really fun kit. So brand new kit in our kits collection and um, I sense that it won't last very long. Our kits are pretty much while supplies last. So if you're interested in this cute little Halloween box kit, Halloween, it's called, now I can't remember, what's it called? Something home, haunted home, not haunted house, haunted home. So if you're interested in that, look in our kits um, section of the website. There's also a new Christmas card kit, but I wasn't quite ready for a Christmas card kit yet, so I didn't order that one, but I did order. Of course, you guys know, the Halloween one. Um, the catalog, the what I call the fall mini catalog, it's actually called the September to December 2024 mini catalog, but for us over here in the United States, it's really the fall catalog, right? I mean, September to December, it's all of that. So this is coming out September. Now, I don't want to tell you the wrong date, so let me look. September 4th, okay? Um, uh, if you've ordered with me in the last year, you're most likely already going to be getting one of these from me in the mail. Unless I know that you're a demonstrator, um, then I take you out of the list because you get one anyway from Stampin' Up! But if you have shopped with me in the last year, uh, you'll be getting one of these. Usually towards the end of the month, they come towards the end of August. Um, so it's uh, really cute. I can't show you the inside yet, but it's really, 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 really cute. And I've already started um, playing a little bit. I'm gonna show you September's Club Create that features something from in this catalog in a little bit. But the other thing I wanted to tell you that if you're interested in buying the starter kit, you can order from this if you buy the starter kit in August, okay? So if that interests you, click the starter kit link at the top of my blog or it says join, I think, and I'll update this video with that link too. And you can um, choose from the products that demonstrators can pre-order. Demonstrators, the perk of being a demonstrator is that you get to order early. So lots of us have already ordered. I've seen several people online posting their, their boxes that they got, and I just haven't had time because I was quickly trying to design Club Create and got that done, um, and I'm going to show you that in a second. But anyway, if you're interested in the starter kit, you can um, choose items from this catalog during August. And then it'll be um, every, open for everybody in September, September 4th. All right, so let's see. My... my my iPad died, so let me um, open this up so I can see you guys in your comments. All right, good, there you are. Hello, everybody. I'm not seeing any comments on my phone, so I apologize. Hello, good to see you guys. Happy that you are here. All right, I think I'm gonna turn you guys around so that you can see some things that I wanna show you. So just hold on for a second. Let me switch 
this camera view and get you guys centered and straight. Let's see if I can do that. We'll move this little thing out of the way. And let me grab my phone stand over here for my iPad. That way I can keep my iPad from falling down. Hello, what? Darla, fall weather in Minnesota. You're kidding. I'm booking a ticket. I'll be there tonight. <laughs> I wish. My husband's actually going, where's he going next week? Is he going to Minnesota or Colorado? I can't remember. He goes to both. He spends a lot of time in Minnesota for business. Thanks, Mary Alice. Little headband. I used to wear my hair like this all the time when I was younger. And I forget. I like, you know, just like a bandana type headband. I do like that. Okay. Um, Mediterranean Blooms is this month's all-star video class tutorial. Here's my project. Um, they all feature the Mediterranean Blooms suite from the annual catalog. 12 different projects designed by 12 different Stampin' Up! demonstrators. They're all video tutorials. The PDF includes measurements in um, metric and imperial. Imperial is inch inches, by the way. I don't think I ever heard it called imperial until I started doing this PDF <laughs> and realized that's what it's called. I don't know. But for those of us that need inches, they're in there. For those of us that need centimeters, those are in there too. Um, you can get this for free by spending $50 or more with me online in August. Um, you could also buy it in my PDF store for free. Um, for free. For $15. I'm thinking about the next thing I'm going to say. It's already in my PDF store if you're interested in that. Or if you're on my team, in my first level, if you buy the starter kit for me, you get this for free every month. Okay, there we go. That's that. Um, reminder about your uh, bonus days coupons. If you earned bonus days coupons in July, search your email for you've earned bonus days coupons. I think that's what the subject says. And you can redeem them. I have actually forgotten to redeem my, mine. I put my adhesive order in this morning for the tax-free weekend and forgot to use my coupon. So that just means I get to order some more goodies. Um, so anyway, if you have those, make sure you use them by the end of August. If you think you should have them and you don't, and you've lost the email, I, I believe you can call Stampin' Up! and they'll resend them to you, I think. Jean, North Dakota had frost warnings last night. Is that unusual for August? That seems so crazy to me. It has gotten so hot here. You know, I've been bragging about how wonderful our July was. Well, now the hell high has moved in and we are boiling and our pool is so hot. You don't even want to touch it. So gross. Um, Mary Pitt says 20, uh, 99 degree temps yesterday. Um, I thought it was cooler here in Northern California. So no, huh? Um, yeah, no, it's hot, hot, hot here too. It snowed on Trail Ridge in Colorado. That's crazy. I did hear there was some kind of front coming through, um, but it's not coming here. That's for sure. Ugh, August is the worst month. I was at a store yesterday checking out and the lady said, don't you just think August is the worst month of the year? And I said, yes, I totally, totally agree with that. It's too hot. Uh, you know, there's all this back to school craziness. And there's nothing fun in August. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so that's my opinion. Okay. Um, one last reminder. Um, Tax-free weekend for Texas is this weekend. I'm trying to see. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yours starts tomorrow, the 10th. But I think everybody else. Uh, Florida, yours ends on Sunday. Oh, Mississippi. Okay. I... I stand corrected. Mississippi, yours is the 12th through... No, no, that's July. July, forget that. Um, but Massachusetts, yours starts tomorrow. Florida, yours ends on Sunday. Um, anybody else? August 8th, what's today? The 9th, August, do, 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 Texas, today, ours started. So if you have a tax-free, if you're in Texas, Mississippi... No, no, <laughs> I can't get it right. Texas, Massachusetts, or Florida... You have a day or two left to take advantage of the tax-free weekend. You can save on adhesive, markers, uh, grid paper, and paper snips for the most part. I will share this link one more time in today today when I update this video for you. Um, and if, if you didn't see your state on that list, the list is pinned here at the top of my Facebook group. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I didn't make the rules. I didn't make the tax laws. I didn't come up with them. I'm just sharing the information. So, um, anyway, that's when I buy all my adhesive for the whole year is in August when I can save on that tax. Okay, another thing that everybody can take advantage of is our designer series paper sale. 15% um, off um, most of the papers from the annual catalog. So if you are a paper addict like me and you want to stock up on some of the papers, um, the sale price is already there on the website and uh, you will save 15%. So if you order some tax-free stuff and you want to throw in some DSP, you'll save 15% off on that. DSP just stands for designer series paper, which most of us refer to as pattern paper. It's our pattern paper. Okay, so that sale is through the end of August. Okay, so there's that. Now let me show you um, class to go market goodness. You guys have been really excited about this class. Thank you to everybody who's already registered. Um, I won't start working on this until the last week of August. They will ship August 30th. It has five cards and the mini album, the recipe mini album in the kit. Um, it uses the mark, market to market suite, the market goodness bundle. Um, you're going to get a full pack of paper, linen thread, and uh, a package of dots. You can get it with the bundle, without the bundle. Uh, you can, if you're on my team, my first level Sweet Stampede team gets the class kit at a discount. Or if you just want the PDF, that option is available too, $15 in my PDF store. Deadline for this class is August 23rd, okay? Uh, details for this will be on today's uh, blog post. You can scroll down, click it. It'll take you back over there and let you know all the details for that. Um, if you want to register for that, you have to email me. Um, I can't, per Stampin' Up! Rules, we can't put those links um, on social media or our blog because it includes product. So you just have to email me for that link. Or if you're in my email, already on my email list, I've sent it to you already. But I'd be happy to send it to you again. Okay, here is what I'm super excited about. This is my favorite bundle in the new holiday catalog, More Than Autumn. It's a million dollar sales achiever, let's see, Joe Golden, it's her set. And it is crazy, crazy cute. Um, I love the scripty fonts. You've also got scripty dyes. Um, it's got the coffee cup or hot chocolate or whatever you wanna call it. It's got the little pie, donuts, and all the little things that go with it. So this is Club Create for August. No, I'm sorry, Club Create for September. So this will not ship until late September, around the 20th, okay? Um, but if you would like to subscribe to Club Create, um, that subscription is already open, okay? Uh, between August 8th and September 7th is the window to subscribe for this kit. It's $45 a month. Uh, you get about $20 to $25 in product in your kit each month and five projects. You get a video tutorial of all five projects and the PDF and that $45 includes shipping as well. Um, it is a subscription, so when you sign up, it's gonna charge you every month on the day that you signed up unless you cancel. And you can cancel anytime. If you just wanna sign up for one kit, for this kit, go for it and then just cancel. Sign up and then cancel. But if you stick around for six months, you get a $25 product credit to spend. I just. Uh, ordered like 50 different things for the pe for the 50 people who are claiming their Club Create rewards this month. So it it's fun. It is a fun way to get a little uh, kit in the mail each month and to get some um, free goodies after six months. They come like this. Okay, um, this this one, depending, hopefully this paper doesn't sell out and I don't have to change it up a little bit, but September you're gonna get a full pack of paper you're gonna get a full pack of dots and then um, a little bit of ribbon as well. You can add on the kit, uh, the bundle to your kit. Um, if you add on your the bundle to your Club Create kit, I give it to you uh, without tax and shipping. So you save a little bit there. Um, but anyway, if you would like to subscribe to Club Create for September, that window is now open. Uh, you can do that. Uh, there's a link um, on today's PDF, today's blog post, and at the top of my blog, it says Club Create. And there was a little something in my mind I was gonna tell you, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, the PDF, it's not ready yet. I haven't finished it. 
Um, and I'm going to try to finish it today and then I'll send it off to my proofreader. So hopefully next week, if you want just the PDF and video option, um, I will let you guys know when it's available. Okay. Yeah. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite bundle. Um, it's last week's a PDF. This week is for last week's PDF. Susan. Okay. Thank you. Let me see if I can fix that real quick. Let me grab my computer and see if I can change that while I am talking. Um, if you have ordered, if you are, okay, so like I said, if you ordered with me anytime in the last year, you're gonna get that cute little catalog in the mail sometime soon. Uh, you know, they don't, they go media mail, I guess, or bulk mail, so you don't know how long it's gonna take. Okay, hold on, what is happening here? Where is Facebook Friday? It's not here. Why is it not here? Okay. You know, I have two Google accounts and it does, it does um, cause me to, there it is. It does cause me some problems. Somehow I ended up with two different Google accounts where I, where I upload these. Okay, here we go. Copy link. Now let me come over here. Um, so if you guys haven't joined me for Facebook Friday before, what I'm doing right now is fixing the PDF that's over at pinkbuckaroo.com. It's going to have the, um, it is going to have the measurements and supply list of everything that we're going to do today. Let's see. I think I have updated it. Let me see. Okay. Now it's updated. So if you go over to pinkbuckaroo.com, today's blog post, it will have that free PDF for you. Thank you, Susan. Okay, so that's Club Create for September, and I think that's the last thing that I needed to tell you guys. Let me just make some room here, um, and then we're going to look at pri the prize from last week. If you haven't joined me for Facebook Friday before, I do three projects, usually with, I pick like a bundle or stamp set, and we make three projects, um, and then um, if you like them, if you want them as a kit, a little project kit. I send them for free to anybody who places an order between now and Monday at midnight. They look kind of like this. Um, I don't do any stamping for you. You will have to have the musical jamboree stamps. And there's another couple of stamp sets that I used. Um, just know that there won't be any stamping in your kit. You have to do that yourself. Um, but I do send you the other things that you need, paper, ribbon, um, you know, whatever, if there's like a circle, I'll cut the circles for you, that, that kind of thing. And then I do make you a little tag, a little thank you tag, okay? So um, if you'd like that, the minimum order is $35. You can order anything you want um, at stampnut.com. Just make sure you use that host code so that I know that you want that kit, okay? Um, the other part of Facebook Friday is if you um, share the video, either on Facebook or on YouTube, I will enter you into a drawing next week for the flower cart bundle. I mean, I'll pick somebody at random who shared the video and I will send this to you for free. Last week's winner actually got a bundle and a class kit. Um, it's the Latte Love class kit and bundle and Angela Fernandez, congratulations. Angela, I don't think I have your mailing address. I'm not sure. So if you'll just message me, email me, please. Oh, there she is right there. Angela, there you are. I saw you pop up. I don't know. Message me, okay? Your mailing address. Thank you for sharing my video. You won the class kit and the bundle. Okay, okay, we are done. We are ready to go. So let me get my first project tray over here. And now I have to tell you, I don't know if <laughs> Angela, yay! I don't know if Lisa's here. Lisa, was it you? Who? Lisa Carter, was it you who shared the the s'mores? Um ramen somebody saw ramen in the store the other day you know like the noodles that was s'more flavored was it you know, i can't remember who it was anyway i was laughing because i was looking for s'more related treats and i was like that is not the kind of s'more related treats we want over here on facebook friday we want something sweet so this is the first thing we're going to make and i have to show you what i found on amazon it's really interesting i've never seen anything like this it's um 
Choco Biscuit S'more Kit, and it makes 20 s'mores. And they come like this. They're like in a little package. Mm, it smells so good. And they're just like a little cookie with the chocolate already on it. And then it has the little marshmallows. So I was like, okay, well, we need a box for those. So we've used these boxes before, and I have them linked today on today's blog post. I have both of them. Um, it, you just It's a little clear box that you're just going to put together. Um, on Amazon, it shows that they're like for popsicles or something, which I'm not, I'm not, um, at least it wasn't you. Who was it? Oh, maybe it was Patty. I bet it was Patty. You and Patty always share funny things. Um, I bet it was Patty because ew. Yeah. Can you imagine, um, s'more flavored ramen? I can't think of anything grosser. Anyways, um, here is. We're not doing anything with s'more related ramen, I promise. Here is the little box. Just goes together like that. You get a whole bunch of them in a pack. So I have them both linked for you today if you want to make this. Um, I've already put this one together so that we can make our little thing. Now, I am using some paper that you might not recognize. Um, and I realized that this was over on the clearance rack recently, and it's been there for a while. It's a 12 by 12 pack of paper. I think this was celebration was this celebration paper? I feel like it was. Um, and it's a bunch of paper in here. So I, it's only, I put it on the supply list. It's $27. Um, and it has a ton of paper in it. So we're going to use this pattern right here. Um, so if you, if you don't recognize it, it's because it's on clearance and it's only on the website. All right. So I use that paper as inspiration for the colors that we're gonna do here for our little singing coyote, okay? Let me get all of my things in order. Let's make our tag. Um, really, that's all you have to make for this because we're just gonna wrap that paper around that box and it's super easy. Um, the coyote's cute. Now, there are not dies for this. Don't you hate it when they come out with a super cute stamp set but without the dies? Now, it is gonna keep your cost down because you don't have to buy the dies, but Good thing we have paper snips, right? Because we can totally cut this out with paper snips. I know I hear some of you grumbling, but don't worry. We're not gonna fussy cut this one. We're gonna leave it, but we are going to fussy cut the little fire. <laughs> you thought you were gonna get away with no fussy cutting, but you're wrong. We're gonna fussy cut the, the fire. Okay, so let me show you how I'm gonna color this guy. I didn't want to, um, make it like solid gray. So we're gonna do this little, I don't even know what you call this technique, but you you go inside the lines with smoky slate. Oh Lord, I need my glasses and I don't have them. So this might be kind of messy. So go inside the lines like this and you wanna work in just a small little section and then get your color lifter and just pull all the color towards the middle and what it's going to do is take that ink and bleed it to the middle so it's going to be kind of light a light gray all right so i'm going to do that and you really want to just kind of do a, a little bit at a time um i don't know if you wait too long i'm not sure if you wait too long then the ink won't spread like you want it to so just do like a little sections at a time. This this stamp set's very cute, very cute. And uh, I have spent the last few weeks, we've been doing online exclusives. And then I was like, you know, there are all these other sets that I really wanna play with from the catalog. So we're gonna do that. Next week, we'll do the little sweet peas. I bet many of you have already bought the little sweet peas stamp set. The little grumpy pea, have you guys seen him? He's so cute. So we're gonna do that next week, okay? All right, so keep your line kind of light. You don't want it to be too heavy, which I think I may have done a little bit too heavy of a hand on this one. But it, the ink will start to just kind of bleed and just give it some time to do its thing and it'll look, it'll look good when you're done, I promise. All right, so let me finish him up around his ears. The lady across the street from me, I saw her when I was walking one morning this week, 
And she stopped me and she said, Erica, don't let your dogs out because I had a coyote in my backyard this morning. And she has a fenced in backyard. And I, I have, we have, Pepper and I on our walks have come face to face with a coyote a couple of times. Scares me half to death. Um, but the fact that it was, it had jumped the fence and was in her backyard really kind of freaked me out. But you know, um, I'm using Calypso Coral for his bandana. He's definitely not as cute as this guy. He's very, the one that I've seen, it, and maybe it's more than one, but he's very um, scraggly and scrawny and small. He doesn't look very scary, but I do know in a pack, they can be kind of vicious. And I'm sure Pepper would know how to defend herself <laughs> when it came to coyotes. She'd just bark at them and think that they would run away, and I don't think they would. So pretty weird to think about having to, you know, like, oh, be careful when you let your dogs out. And we have a doggy door, so, you know, my dogs just go out whenever they want to go out. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That's what happens when you live out in the country. Got to deal with the coyotes. All right, pecan pie for his banjo. He's singing Home on the Range, I think. I did light Calypso Coral in his ears. And then let's do um, pecan pie for the logs of our fire. The poor little coyote, he seems kind of young, the one that I keep seeing over and over, and I think he's just hungry, but, but you know, sorry, don't come over here though. Don't come eat my dog. And they can have rabies too, which, I mean, of course our dogs have rabies shots, but you just never know, right? You just never know what's gonna happen with wild animals. I saw a video yesterday of somebody pulling out, it was in Florida for my Florida friends, somebody pulling out a 12 foot, my husband said it was a python, out of their pool. So new fear unlocked. <laughs> I mean, I knew that they could, that could happen, but at now seeing it on video, ugh. Can you imagine being in your pool and looking over in the, you know, the skimmer, the little, the little square thing where the water goes in and it like cleans the water, looking over there and seeing a giant snake looking back at you? I don't think I'd ever be able to get in my pool again if, I, if that happened. Now that I've spoken to the universe, I better knock on wood. So we know how the snakes like me out here. Um, pumpkin pie, daffodil delight, pecan pie. The, the other thing I'm gonna do is take my light pool party. Um, you had coyotes come to you the back barbed wire fence growing up. Donkeys are mean and run them off. Oh, well, I don't know if my HOA would approve a donkey. <laughs> I know, Joan, I live in the Wild West. Scorpions, snakes, coyotes. You know, I was really scared the first time I saw the coyote, but I mean, he's very small. He's probably not much bigger than my schnauzers. And he's super scrawny. But again, pack mentality, you sh you just never know. I do carry some bear spray now when I walk Pepper, just in case. Okay, I'm taking my pool party and just kind of outlining him. Uh, the, the purpose of this, I think, is just to give you some dimension. It kind of creates a shadow behind him. It makes it kind of pop off the, the page a little bit. Okay, so I did go too heavy. Can you see? I went too heavy on that, on him. So go lighter when you color him because it didn't work very well today. My, uh, he looks a little, oh, there, now it's coming. Maybe my, uh, maybe my color lifter is going dry. Well, whatever. We're going to have to move on, Mr. Coyote. You're just going to have to look a little weird today okay anyhow go light with your smoky slate go light all right little old olive oops we don't want upside down grass little old olive grass around him like that and then we will get our paper snips and cut out the fire the fire has these little crackle little tiny crackles above it and don't worry we're not going to cut those out just cut them off they're not gonna you're not gonna miss any kind of detail if you cut those off so go around like this and i leave like a little white border 
around as I go. Now, has school started where you guys are at? I know we talked a little bit about this last week. I know my cousin in Tennessee, she has started. Um, here we start a week from Monday, but this week has been all the back to school appointments. You know, the, the doctor, the dentist, dermatologist. We had all the appointments this week. It was a busy, chaotic week, plus orchestra camp, basketball practice, tennis practice, tennis matches have started. We're gonna put that little fire right there. It's crazy, it's crazy. August, I just, ugh, August is my 12th favorite state, a 12th favorite month, <laughs> my least favorite. Okay, happy birthday. Now this happy birthday is coming from a different stamp set. So let me show you what stamp set that is. I'm stamping it in Calypso Coral on um, one of the happy little labels, banner, happy little labels, that's what it's, is that what it's called? Happy Little Things, Happy Little Things dies. Stamp set is something fancy. I wanted a small sentiment and I didn't quite like what was in this set for kind of what I was going for. So I used Happy Birthday. You could do thank you, congratulations, hello. I don't know. If you're gonna do a party, if you're gonna make it a party favor, maybe you're having like a last blast of summer party then you could say thank you for coming or good luck or whatever. You can totally change the sentiment. Okay, we've got our little dude. Oh, we're gonna put some little bling on here. Um, these are, what are these called? Adhesive backed sparkle gems. Adhesive backed sparkle gems. Have a little smudge there. You know, if you have a smudge, just cover it with a dot or a sequin or something. Put this one down here like that. Maybe they look kind of like stars. Well, now I've gone and put too many. So now I have to put another one to make it even. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now let's just take your DSP, your patterned paper. Oh, the stars would be cute too. Maybe we should do the stars. Let's do the stars this time. And three by nine, I believe, is the size. Just pinch it around the edges, okay? like that. Let's see, this is a little bit too long, so let's cut it just about half an inch. And where is my adhesive? Right here. Uh-oh, I think I might be out. I may need to go get some. Let's see. Nope, I got some. Okay. And then we're going to, oh, end over end, okay? You're just adhering it to itself. And then we've got basic beige ribbon. We're gonna tie a big bow here at the top. This box is kind of like the size of a soap, a bar of soap. So that would be a good box too if you like to give soaps as a gift. And in the, like I said in the picture, it shows like popsicles, which I don't know. I've never made popsicles before. Okay, last but not least, just take your dimensionals and Put them on either side of the ribbon, and there you go. And that's it. Let's look at the other one. Don't I have a third one? Is it missing? Oh, it's back here. This one is the best one. This is the one I did first, and it's way, the coloring is better, <laughs> for sure on that one. Okay, anyways, play around with that little uh, outlining and uh, color lifter technique. See if you like it. If not, then just color it in. You could also use your um, watercolor pencils or your, um, you know, your Hello Water Painter. Color it however you want. Color them however you want. Okay, so there we go. That's our first project. That was pretty easy. Second project is a card. And this time, I like to find, hold on, let me get my tray over here. I like to find other stamp sets that coordinate. You know, like if I'm using a stamp set and I have another stamp set that goes really well with it, I like to kind of dig through my sets and see what would go. So in the Grove um, is what I'm using, and I haven't ever used this before, and it's actually a very popular set. Um, in the Grove, it's got the mountains, the grass, um, and then it's got these really cool dyes. We're gonna use, we're gonna do two sets of mountains. We're gonna do the little 
uh, kind of forest top edge and then the tree die as well. Now, would you like to actually see the project? I haven't shown you the project yet. It's a split front card. See our little, is this an otter, you guys? Would you say that's a river otter? That's what I'm calling him. He's kind of playing his little fiddle there. And then the in, on the inside there are those mountains. So you split the card front and just put a window sheet there so you can kind of peek through to see those mountains in the back. Um, I'm using, um, you know what, I need to get another piece of basic white too. Let's see, do I have enough right here? Is this long enough for that stamp? Let's see. Yes, okay. I'm using Pool Party card, a Pool Party card base because um, this flower, or this paper, the country woods paper is Pool Party. All right, let's stamp. We're gonna stamp the mountains twice in um, pecan pie, but we're only gonna ink it one time because you want it to be kind of light. So one, and then I'll stamp this one over here, two. So we'll have a dark set of mountains and a light set of mountains. And then we're gonna stamp our trees in Old Olive. Okay, and then, um, let's see, Memento Black with our little fiddle guy, our fiddle player, right there. All right, so we'll cut these out, but first let's color our otter. Yes, otter, you guys? Let me see, what do you think? Do you think it's an otter? Emmett Otter's Jug Band. <laughs> That's funny, Lisa, I've never heard of that before. Um, now, fair warning, my light, uh, pecan pie is almost completely out of ink. So let's see if we can color this guy before it runs out. I just put it in order for another set this morning with my adhesive. All right, so he is, I'm gonna leave his little belly white. Do you guys have river otters where you live? That is not a Texas thing, at least not down here where I live. Maybe East Texas. I don't I don't know. I don't think we have otters in Texas. That that feels like a mountainous region type animal. I don't know. I don't know anything about these little cute otters. Okay, so we're gonna just color him. You can color him whatever color you want. Crumb cake would be probably good too. Maybe I don't know, maybe Pebble Path, that might be too dark. Um, you can take your dark if you want and add in some shadow, kind of underneath wherever you would see like something overlapping and then of course along the bottom and his tail. And then take your light and just kind of blend all that together. Hard to blend when you your marker is running out of ink. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow here too. Maybe on that side of his face like that, just to give him a little bit of dimension. Okay, then we'll get crumb cake. Do I have crumb cake? Right here. I'm gonna use crumb cake dark for his fiddle or violin, I don't know, what do you wanna call it? He's probably, if he's in a jamboree, he's probably playing a fiddle. I don't know what the difference is, but I think we'll call it. River otters and beavers, Joan, and where, where is that? Otter is, yeah, you guys think it's an otter? Oh, it's, an, it's a Muppets movie. That sounds like a Muppets movie, Lisa, for sure. Okay, let's bring over the cut and box machine. Yesterday, in between doctor's appointments, Addie and I ran into TJ Maxx, and they are in full Halloween mode. I mean, I don't think they have all their Halloween things, but definitely their Halloween things have arrived. So if you are like me, and you love pumpkins, specifically pumpkins, it was funny because uh, we were walking through, and they have, you know, spooky Halloween stuff, and then they have like a whole aisle of pumpkins and my daughter said okay mom this is more your style of halloween 
<laughs> I was like, yes, you're right. Because I do, when I say Halloween, I really just mean pumpkins and scarecrows and all that cute stuff. Um, the thing I'm seeing this year too, a big trend is pink Halloween stuff. So if you guys go, I know um, Michael's too had some pink Halloween stuff. And you know if it's pink, I'm going to love it. No, Lisa, couldn't find, haven't seen the ghost walking the dog thing yet. I think, I think that's like a unicorn now. People are running to the store to buy them and resell those. There's like this trendy ghost that, that TJ Maxx has. It's like, there's a little one and there's a big one. And it's a cute little ghost walking a dog. Ghost, a ghost dog. And people are going crazy. I mean, I, I mean, it's cute, but I don't think it's, oh, I forgot to do my treats. I don't think it's so cute, like, you know, to go crazy. I don't know. Lisa, what do you think about it? I mean, I think it's one of those things that the hysteria, you know, people have, oh my gosh, everybody loves it. So I must love it too. It's cute, but I don't think it's like. Cabbage Patch Kid craziness cute. You guys remember the Cabbage Patch Kid craziness? Back in the 80s. Okay, so this piece right here, this is just a, a edge die. So you're just gonna get like a strip and it's sh just short of four and a fourth inches. So just trim off that little edge like that. Oh, you saw a mama otter. You thought it was gonna jump in your coyote protecting her baby's nest. Whoa, that maybe it wasn't so cute then, huh? Animals are gonna be wild. Just like that bear that climbed into our car in California. <laughs> we had a bear break into our car in California because we're dumb Texans and we left food in our car. We knew better. We didn't know our kids had left food. We'll blame it on the kids. All right, cut this little guy out. Again, boy, my eyes are just like, please put your glasses on. We cannot even pretend to focus anymore. Getting old just sucks, doesn't it? First your, your eyesight goes, then the gray hairs start showing up. <sighs> you think it's never gonna happen and then it starts to happen fast. Super fast. Okay, now we've got all of our pieces. Now here is, let me show you what the card base looks like. What I did, I took a half sheet of cardstock, you know, on the long side, or on the short side, cut it in half at four and a fourth. So you have a regular card base that, you know, folds over like this. Then the card front, I cut off this bottom piece so that I would just have two inches here at the top and then I cut that remaining piece down to two inches as well. And we're gonna take a window sheet that's about, I don't know, two and a half inches, and we're gonna adhere it first behind this edge. I'm gonna get it straight. It may be a little bit too wide. I may need to trim it. Okay, and then take this other piece Ah, uh-oh, uh-oh. And you want to line it up down here with these corners like this so that it's going to be exactly in the right place. And then press that in. So then you have a normal size card front, but you've just put a window in it. Okay, so then on the end side, a little piece of white, four by five and a fourth. We're going to take first along this edge, we're going to adhere the trees behind the edge like that. You know what, let's put on our pattern paper too. Okay, these are two by four, both of these. Oh, I just love this little chippy wood paper. It's on sale by the way. Okay, then get your mountains. And I think we'll do, um, did I use dimensionals? I did, okay, so first, you can do this two different ways. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put both the mountains on the back side. I think yesterday in my other video, I made them, made one of them stuck here to the front of the card, but let's do it like this. We'll put this, you need to kind of eyeball 
See where it's gonna go, about right there. You wanna be able to see it peeking through. And then you're gonna take the other set, the darker set, and you don't want them to be identical, you know, like a little carbon copy. So kind of scoot it over so that it's poking through like that, okay? Then just get your scissors. Do I only have paper snips? No, here's my big scissors. And trim these mountain edges off. Okay, so they're, they're inside when you open it up, but you can see them through the window. It's kind of fun. All right, now take your trees, your old olive trees, and we'll put that right there. Now oh, let's move it over a little bit like that. The sentiment is, it says, you're a great friend. Let's see if I can stamp it straight-ish. I'm going for a straight-ish. Okay, not too bad. I'm not going for perfection, you guys. Just going for good enough. <laughs> That's my motto. Good enough. All right, put that there. Then get your little otter and put him or her right there. Last but not least, if you wanna add a little bow, I'm just gonna make kind of a big looped bow like that. Then we'll get a mini glue dot. and tuck it right under him and kind of arrange it like that and snip snip there you go and you guys know how i hate writing on the inside of cards so look we've made it so you don't have to write too much on the inside that's my kind of card all right, there you go. Isn't he cute with the In the Grove bundle? I thought that was a pretty good combo. Pretty good, um, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess combination is the word I'm looking for. They go together pretty well. All right, good. I'm glad you guys like it. It's fun. That's my favorite project from today. Okay, I have one more. Let me see, let me clean up a little bit and I will grab it. It's another s'more treat, of course. And we're gonna need our simply scored. And again, I'm just making a box and a tag. This time we're gonna make the box. Where did my other card go? This treat, again, I did get on Amazon, but when I was grocery shopping this week, I saw that it was at the grocery store too. Golden Grahams S'mores Treat Bar. Perfect. Okay, so I linked them. They're linked on my blog, but of course you can just look at your grocery store too. Walmart, whatever. On the sentiment, did I show you the project? I haven't showed you the project yet. Love you s'more. I wanted to do kind of a pun uh, with the word s'more. And if you type, if you Google s'more puns, there's a lot. So anything where you're gonna use the word more, you can just substitute the word s'more. So we're gonna do love you s'more. Um, the love you is from the Friends for Life. Um, and you could change that, you know, miss you. Um, I don't know, you could kind of play around with that. So if that sentiment isn't right for you, play around with it. We're gonna use these, this die, this little mini alphabet die. Is that what it's called? Let me make sure I have the right name. Mini alphabet die to cut out the letters. I love this die because one swoop and you've got your letters, all your letters cut out. Um, let's do the tag first. Um, I'm using, by the way, the Iconic Celebrations paper again. I am really, really loving this paper. Um, but I have found that it is somewhere in between vanilla and white. On the screen, I'm looking at it right now, it does look more white. But in person, it's kind of, it can kind of go either way. So I decided to do a very vanilla tag. But our little badger needs to be white because he has a white belly. So we're gonna stamp him on basic white, okay? And if you don't wanna fussy cut him, I think this, 
this project, you could totally just stamp him on a tag and it would be fine. But I love to use dimensionals, so we're gonna do that. Now for black, I, oops, that's not the end I want. I want the bullet end. Um, when I am coloring something that's black, I don't really like to use our basic black Stampin' Blends for things like this because you really lose detail because it, they're so dark. I mean, they're like so, so dark. So, I'm not looking at my, oh, I went all the way up. Okay, hold on. Um, so, use your Smoky Slate instead, okay? trying to think light gray and then take your dark what color this is not smoky slate that is creme cake here's our dark smoky slate then take your dark smoky slate and it can be the um, contrast for the darker parts of him his legs his arms and part of his little face and then I just love the tambourine white I felt like tambourine probably should just be white Okay, but again, that's up to you, whatever you want to do. Okay, there we go. Isn't he cute? He's very cute. Again, get your paper snips. Michelle, you love anything s'mores? Yeah, it's hard to beat a s'more, right? We like s'mores too. My daughter got a s'more, some little s'more um, kit, I guess, at a, like a white elephant at Christmas. And it's basically like a little tea light candle warmer, I think. And you just heat it up. And she's been using it to make her little s'mores. It's pretty cute. It was, you know, one of those white elephant rando things. Who knows where it came from? But we like s'mores around here too. We uh, have a little fire pit in our backyard that we like to make s'mores. Do you guys like your marshmallows burnt? Or do you like them just barely cooked? I think I like them just barely cooked. I don't know. I, I do I do kind of appreciate a burnt marshmallow, though. I mean, it, it does add a whole different layer of flavor, doesn't it? A burnt marshmallow. Okay, we're going to build this tag from the bottom up. So we need to cut our letters. So let's do that. Um, I cut my piece a little bit short because we just need, we don't need that bottom row. So I'm going to put this through here. This die also has a couple of extra letters for those um, letters that you use more, like A and E. Yeah, toast, lightly toasted golden brown. Yeah, I know. If I had to choose, I probably would go that way too. Okay, we need an O. We need an R. Um, we need, what do I have over here? S M. Here's our M. Let's get our take your pick tool. Here's an E. Can we get it to come out? There's our E. And then there's our S. All right, so there are your letters. Super easy. The tag that I'm using, the very vanilla tag, is in the... Um, Hello, I lost the name. The celeb um, Greetings of the Season. Did I not put it? I didn't put it on the list. Darn it. Greetings of the Season dies. They're online exclusive. They're new. Greetings of the Season. And they're all tags. So when the holidays come around and you want to just make some simple gift tags, it's really good for that. All right, so I'm going to start over here at the bottom. S. These letters are pump um, not pumpkin pie, pecan pie. M. And if you work quickly before your glue dries, that'll give you some time to kind of wiggle things around if you need to. Also, you could use an adhesive sheet on the back of your letters if you don't want to mess with the glue. Let's see if we can get that little dot out of there. There we go. All right, and s'more, the word s'more, actually has a little apostrophe. So I'm not gonna even try to cut something that small. So I'm just gonna take my pecan pie and put a little, a little apostrophe there. All right, then get your pumpkin pie. Love you, s'more, right there. 
Again, that is from um, Friends for Life, the Friends for Life stamp set. Then we've got some, oh, let's do our fire first and then we'll do our music notes. We've got our fire right here. And then we'll stamp a few music notes around like that. And color the fire just the same way we did last time. Pumpkin pie, pecan pie, daffodils light. If you ever are unsure of what to color something, just Google it. And for sometimes for something like this, I always forget, does the orange go on the outside of the fire or does it go on the inside of the fire? So I always have to look it up. Same with the candy corn. I can never remember what order candy corn goes in. So just Google, you know. And I always do like cartoon fire or cartoon candy corn because that is a little bit similar, more similar to what you're probably coloring. And then you'll know exactly what you need to do. Okay. Pecan pie. This is where my eyes really just don't work on these tiny little places. Have any of you started watching the new season of the Umbrella Academy? It's a super weird, weird show on Netflix that we watched with our kids, um, our teenagers. Or well, let me clarify, teenagers. And the last season just came out. But, you know, again, I have to complain about when they do this to us. It's been how many years since the last season? I feel like we have to go all the way back and rewatch the whole series to even remember, especially with a show that's that weird. And you gotta remember what? Cause there's like some time travel and stuff in that show. But my daughter said yesterday, let's watch it from the very beginning. Season one, episode one. I said, no ma'am, thank you. I will watch a synopsis on YouTube. <laughs> Lisa, you lost interest at first. It is a weird show. And I can see where if I hadn't, if my kids hadn't wanted to watch it, I probably would have lost interest too. Um, it's kind of even hard to understand to wrap your head around it. It's pretty good. I mean, if you're looking for something, even if you have older kids, maybe young adults, something to watch with them. Okay, for our box, let me get the measurements. They're right here on the PDF. Let's see if I typed them right. Five and a half by seven and a fourth. The short side, we're going to start with the short side at half an inch, two and a fourth, three inches, and four and, ooh, I'm on the skinny one, four and three fourths. This is a half inch, and then these two skinny ones are three quarter of an inch. And then we'll turn it to the long side, and we're going to do three quarters of an inch and six and a half, okay? So then get your bone folder and burnish those lines nice and crisp. Um, on that half inch section, remember that was the first score line that we made, we're going to cut off those little uh, tabs, those little square or rectangle tabs on the end. And I've cut in at an angle so that those are, um, that tab, that's where we're gonna put our adhesive so that the corners are cut off. And then you wanna snip the score lines and you can cut the corners off of your square tabs. Snip, snip. I'm feeling a nap coming on. You know, I really, I've told you guys before, I love a Friday afternoon nap. Every week when I'm done with Facebook Friday, I feel like, whew, I need a nap. Are you guys nappers? Do you like a nap? <laughs> My mom laughs because I've always loved a nap, even when I was not so little. You either, I think you either love a nap or you don't love a nap. It either makes you feel awful or you like it. All right, adhesive here on the half inch section. And if I scored correctly, I should be able to lay this down like this and put this one over like that and line it up. And there's our box, okay? And we're gonna just tuck these sides in and then the front, no, and then the back tab and then the front. And you know what, I'm just gonna use this right now because this is a little bit easier 
tuck that in. And then we're gonna drop our Golden Graham S'mores bar, or bar in there. You were just thinking about a nap too? Oh yes, Amy, I do love a nap. Mm, yeah, okay, good. See, I'm not alone. I see many of you saying you love a nap. Now, Mary says, I've never napped. Not even as a baby kid, your poor mother. Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking, Mary. <laughs> your poor mother. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna close that with adhesive because we want our, our recipient to not have to rip the, oh, and there I ran out of adhesive. We don't want our recipient to have to tear into it. Um, my kids were not great nappers either, which is, you know, pretty ironic since their mother is a napper and needs a nap. They, my kids were terrible sleepers. I was just on Facebook this week and you know how your memories pop up. Um, I'm looking for my ribbon. Where is it? Did I put the tray away over there with the ribbon? I did, hold on. Let me grab it. And my Facebook memories is when my youngest was um, like two and a half and she would not sleep at night. She was roaming the house, waking us up multiple times. And I was like, oh, thank God those days are over. I had terrible sleepers. And I'm pretty sure it was my fault. I didn't sleep train. You know, there's all this sleep training and let them cry it out. I could never do that. So my kids were not great sleepers. They are now, man. They'll sleep till two o'clock in the afternoon crazy teenagers. Yes, but going back, I will, I love a nap, but I know some people say if they take a nap, they just feel worse. I've never felt that way. A nap is refreshing. If I take a nap, if I take like a 20 minute nap before I go cook dinner, I am good to go the rest of the evening. But if I don't, I would just feel kind of sleepy the rest of the night. All right. This is that middle stripe pecan and vanilla ribbon. Super cute. And because this these greeting of the season tag dies, I already have the hole in them. We're just gonna use very vanilla baker's twine. And we'll thread this through here. Let's see if I can get this underneath. Come on, tuck in, there we go. And we're gonna tie this around. Oh, I'm just making this look so easy, aren't I? Tie this around the top up here of your bow, which I don't think I got around the bow, but whatever, we'll just put it like this. Oh, goodness. Come on, Mr. Twine, and do what you're supposed to do. There we go. All right, and then that's it. Love you s'more. Teacher treat. This would be a cute teacher treat, I think. Friend treat, I don't know, anything. Love you s'more is just a fun little word and no fire required for these s'mores. They're already made. Oh, Lisa says, my son got his own room in their college apartment because he snores and his roommate needs silence to sleep. That's funny, Lisa. I slept with a snore for a while and then he lost a bunch of weight and doesn't snore anymore. And I can I can attest to the fact that, yes, it's very annoying. <laughs> I'm sure, yes, I know. Okay, well, there you go. There's our third project. Um, I have a couple of bonus cards that I'll post next week. Here is one. The One of the eph ephemera packs has this little um, cactus and a little frame, which is perfect for your coyote. This coyote, I colored him in this time instead of doing that little outline technique. Um, and again, with that um, Country Woods paper. And then this one, oh, what is that stamp set? I can't remember. It's a new one, it has the moon. Perfect for our little howling coyote. Just a note. So I'll post these next week for you guys to see. Oh look, I made it even cute on the inside. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I'll post those for you guys next week so you'll have more ideas. Okay, here are our three projects that we did. If you would like me to send this to you as a kit, I will do that as a thank you for a, an online order. Minimum is $35. Please use the host code so I know you want the projects. If your order happens to be over $150, don't use the host code. You'll get Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up! And I will still send you, <clears throat> excuse me, I will still send you the projects for free. Um, but if it's under 150, please use that host code. 
All right, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm jealous. Now the tables have turned. Those of you up north have beautiful weather and now we're boiling down here in the south. So enjoy that weather. Those of us down here will be hiding away in our air conditioned homes. <laughs> okay, good Angela, thank you for sending it to me. Thanks for sharing the video. You guys, I'll be back next week with some of the sweet, the little sweet pea guys, projects featuring the sweet pea. And um, I'll see you then, all right? Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody.